Hello everyone, this is Sandra Graves, and today we are going to be talking to a San Antonio realtor, an expert. Her name is Christine Denny, and she's going to be giving us some tips about finding your dream home in San Antonio, Texas. Beautiful San Antonio, the home of the Spurs, the Alamo. We have so much things going on, that's the reason why it is San Antonio. How are you? I'm so glad you're here today. Guess what? My name is Christine Denny and I'm a realtor in San Antonio and I've been doing this for five years. And prior to that, I was doing it another five years in Minnesota. I've learned a couple of things since then and I want to make the process easier for all my clients. I love what I do and I love working with people. But you know, real estate can be a little challenging sometimes. So are you ready for some tips to help make this road a whole lot smoother? Let's get started. I have a representation tip. Whether it's your first time buying your house or the 40th time, you should really get representation. A matter of fact, Texas says that everybody has right to representation when they're buying a home. So, what does that mean? It means that there's somebody in your corner who's looking out for you. The seller has representation in that listing agent, so as a buyer, you want representation too. So, the one thing you have to remember though, is that when you get representation, you're not paying for it, the seller actually is paying for it. So why not? You have somebody in your corner who's going to help you through the entire process and make it a whole lot smoother for you. Representation is the first tip. Okay, so what's the next tip? You need to talk to a lender. You wouldn't go grocery shopping without knowing how much you could spend. So why go house shopping without knowing how much you can spend? A lot of people come in my office and say, oh, you know, I think I could probably make you spend $200,000. And they're guessing. They, have, they don't, haven't been to a lender. They don't know what their credit scores are. They don't know what their ability to purchase is. So talk to a lender. They will let you know how much you can spend. And also, they will let you know if you have work to do on your credit. Maybe your credit is great and there's no work necessary. Or maybe it's got a couple of dings and you need to do something to make sure that you can get in a position to buy. Is there anything that I, you can tell me about meeting with an agent? Yes. You know, everybody have their needs and their wants list. So when you come to an agent, you kind of have to have a clear an idea, especially if you're working with somebody. Say you come in with your husband. Your needs and his needs might be a little bit different, but you still both should have your list. You should have your list of, you know, your dream things and then the list what just really are important to you that can make a deal or break a deal. So get those things down. Matter of fact, write them down, come in with your list and realize too that when you're home buying, it's really about elimination versus selection because no home is going to be perfect, you know? There's going to be something that you think, oh, I could tweak this or tweak that. Or even if you built a home, unless it's probably a home that, I don't know, maybe your final home, you've built a few homes down the road, um, then you might have everything you want in it. But if it's your first home, a few years from then, you might think, oh my goodness, I wish I'd put that in there, or I wish I hadn't put that one in there. So, kind of have those things in your mind and realize you have to open your mind because San Antonio has a limited amount of inventory on the market. Matter of fact, they say that if everybody stopped listing houses today, in about three and a half months, we'd run out of inventory. So it's really about eliminating, not selecting the homes. And then open your mind. Don't let little things throw a deal off. You know, don't let go, oh my gosh, I can't stand the paint. The paint you can change, you it's know? Like <laughs> you can change the paint. So don't make that kind of take away a possible home for you. standard time don't forget we're bringing you coaches speakers classes and much more we are here to help you grow don't forget we are here every Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time
was number three. We are gonna go to number four. But I can't even think of what number four is. Uh, what about money? Well, you know, you're going to be negotiating. So you find your perfect home, right? How do you know what to offer? There's going to be the list price. But what I do as a realtor is that I look at the whole market and I see what homes like the one that you selected have um, been selling for. And so we'll use that as a jumping off point to see whether the house is listed for the, what it should be listed for, or if it's high or if it's low. And from that you can determine how much you should offer. Now the thing is that in a market like this, a lot of people think, oh my goodness, let me list, let me offer more. And that way for sure I'm gonna get that house. Because there's probably like four or five other people who could be looking at the same home. The problem though, is that the bank will only lend a certain amount of money and that money has to be what the house could be sold for out in the market. So they, if you offer too much money, they're not going, they're not going to finance that. They'll only finance what it appraises for. And a little bit from now, I'll explain what an appraisal is. Acceptance of an offer. Now let's do a quick review. We've looked for houses, we've negotiated, we've gone back and forth, we've agreed, and the seller accepted your offer. Yay, you're into a house. So you know what that means? It means that you now have 10 days, that's how many, kind of, to um, make sure that the house is the house you want. You are going to be in an option period. And an option period actually can be either one from zero to 10 days or even more and you pay for the ability to inspect the house and the seller will not um, accept another offer on the house during that period of time. So you're going to have your inspector come out and they're going to make sure that the house is the house you want. And what's lovely thing about an option period is that if for some reason you're not love you're not loving the house after all there's a big problem behind that you didn't realize was going on you know and it just makes you uncomfortable you can walk away from the offer and your earnest money is protected but that is only during the option period those 10 days so what else you do during the option period is you also call to make sure you can get insurance on the house because your um, ability to um, borrow money is also based on how much insurance you're going to be paying. So you're calling the insurance company, you're getting any inspections necessary. There could be something that comes up and they say, we want an electrician to take a look at this because this inspection um, is really done by a general inspector. It's not a specialized inspector. So they may ask for somebody who's more specialized, like a roofer may have to come out because he's concerned, but he's not a special, he's not a specialist. He's not a roofer or a she for that matter. So that's what takes place during the inspection period. And if you're happy with the inspections, everything goes through. During the option period, the 10 days ends at five o'clock and that's really important. So all the negotiations have to take place. If you found something that went on with the property, you're not happy and you want the seller to fix it, they have to agree to that by the end of the option period. So that's at the five o'clock of the end of the option period. And so you know, the option period starts the day after all the signatures are on the contract after the offer was accepted. Does that make sense? 10 day option. You're, this is a good thing because you now get to know what lays under the floors and in the ceilings and so forth of your house. Hey, guess what? We're at the closing. We've negotiated. We've gone into option period. And now we are where we're ready to close. But there are a couple of other things that's going on. The title company, they're doing the background check to make sure that the seller actually has the right to sell the house and that you're going to have a clean title. The lender is making sure that you are in a position where you can purchase that home. So all of these wheels are going at the same time and I'm in contact with everybody so you know what's going on. You're never going to be um, without information because it's a really scary time. It's like it's everybody's working and you're wondering what's going on, what's going on. So my job is to make sure that you are informed about what's going on. I'm calling the, in the lender, I'm calling the title company, and I'm getting the information back to you. And before you know it, day of closing is here. 
And you know what you have to do at closing? You need to bring your driver's license and you need to bring a pen and you need to exercise your hands because there are lots of papers to sign. All right, so those were just five little tips and there's so many more that I can sit down and help you with. My job is to get you through the buying process without any kind of hiccups. So when you're ready, come see me. I'm Christine Denny and I would love to be of help with you. Talk to you soon.